I will set his hand also in the sea, and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for, keep for him for evermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make an, to endure for ever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law, and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes, and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with a rod, and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure for ever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established for ever as the moon, and as a faithful witness in heaven, Selah. Everything is clear. Christ is not only the son of David, Matthew chapter 1 verse 1, Mark chapter 10 verse 47 and 48, and chapter 12 verse 35, and Luke chapter 20 verse 41, but David in this context. The territory promised to Abraham, Genesis chapter 15, verses 18 to 21, becomes his David's historically, 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 3, and Christ's prophetically, see Ezekiel chapter 47 to 48. Thou art my father, verse 26, is not true of David. There is no new birth in the Old Testament, for all were born in Adam's image, lived with Adam's image and died with Adam's image. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 22. My father is not our father, Matthew chapter 6 verse 9, the latter designating the father of Israel. Note two items in verse 26. My father referring to his deity, the son of God, and my God referring to his humanity, as the son of man. This explains the cry from Calvary recorded not as my father, my father, why hast, thou, why hast thou forsaken me, but my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me. Matthew chapter 27 verse 46. God the Father is the rock of salvation for Israel, even though Christ is typified by that expression, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. My firstborn, this is literal and not typical, as in Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. Jesus Christ is the first man born of God on this earth. That is why he is called the only begotten, John chapter 3, verse 18. Even though many sons, Hebrew chapter 10, verse 2, verse 10, are later born of God, first John chapter 3, verse 9, and begotten, first John chapter 5, verse 1, of God. The church of the firstborn, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23, is the church of the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. God's mercy is kept with Christ, as in Psalm chapter 2 and chapter 110, and so is his covenant, Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 33. See verse 34 in connection with this, and Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6. 44, 54, verse 10, 59, verse 21, Jeremiah chapter 31 and 33 and verses 20 and 21. His seed also will I make to endure forever. Now comes the good part. For as surely as the speaker addressed by God is his son, the seed mentioned has to be the seed of Psalm chapter 22, 30, which all, which all the masters in Israel missed. He shall see his seed, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10, is the cross-reference, and it has nothing to do with the literal sons and grandsons of David. If his children, verse 30, that's you, if you are his child, for you were born of incorruptible seed, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, if you forsake his law, walk not his judgment, break his judgment, Keep not his commandments. He will what? 
cast you away? No. Make you fall from grace? No. Take the Holy Spirit from you, like Saul and Samson? No. Pluck you out of the Father's hand? No. Damn you in hell? No. Say, I never knew you. Depart from me? No. Make you endure to the end? No. Make it impossible to renew you again to repentance? No. Instead, he will beat you with a rod, verse 32, whip you with a whip, verse 32, as in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 4 to 8, and Job chapter 5, verse 17. But, ah, oh, that that the word nevertheless, never, nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break. Romans chapter 8, verse 29, John chapter 3, verse 36, John chapter 5, verse 24, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 7 to 9, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Nor alter the thing that has gone out of gone out of my lips, verse 33 to 34. Well, we can say glory to God. Well, glory to God. I'm adopted. I'm in the family. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15. I'm a child of the king of Israel and a part of Israel commonwealth. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. I am a son of God with an older brother, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11. Who is the son of God? I don't have no hope. I don't have the hope. I will be one of the elect. Well, there is a pretty good material for those who always are claiming that a saved person can lose his salvation and lose her salvation. But it's, it's not, not that way during this uh, dispensation of the grace of God. Other times are different in the Old Testament than what comes in the time of tribulation and so on. Uh, some, some might say that <clears throat> this is so-called easy believers. So easy, easy believe and everything and, and easy, easy grace and easy mercy and whatever. I don't say it's easy. If you're walking in Christ and uh, in the spirit and what you do after you are saved, it's, it's, I don't say it's, <laughs> it's not always easy. He can beat you with a rod and whip you with a whip. And uh, it's possible that some people might die before their time or get sick. Or we can say that we can lose something or even everything in this life, but not salvation. Uh, those people who are saved will not lose their salvation when they are in Jesus Christ. Everything else can go. So better, uh, better check how you, how you walk and so on and, and repent and make the good fruit for the Lord. And if you don't know how to be saved, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, like Bible says. And then repent and Make good fruit for the Lord and walk in the spirit and not in the flesh or in the world or something like that. <clears throat> Let the things of God be most loved for you, like his pure words and, and all his will, what is in the Bible and especially in the book, in uh, those pages and which are Pauline epistle, especially them is good to check. And uh, well, also Gospel of John. Of course, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and correction and reproof and so on. It's good to take all Bible, but especially for us now in this dispensation are those, uh, are those uh, books of Paul from Romans until Philemon. And this book of John is also a good one for, how could I say, pretty much general uh, salvation epistle uh, like John chapter 3 verse 16. Psalm 89 verse 27 to 37 is a prophecy on the new birth and the eternal security of the believer in the son of David so called. David himself 
pops up as Christ in verse 35, with the mention not only of his seed, but his throne. This is the throne of his glory, found in Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 21, and chapter 3, verse 17, which is located at Jerusalem, Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, when Jerusalem becomes the city of the great king, Matthew chapter 5, verse 35. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 30, 31, this throne is established forever in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7, and Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 33, and we are established forever with it. Revelation chapter 22, verses 3 to 5. There is not one difficult word in the entire 13 verses. Verse 38, 37 indicates the sun and moon will still be present in the new heavens in Revelation 20. It's only said that they will not be needed in the New Jerusalem because God is light, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, and God is present in New Jerusalem, Revelation chapter 21, verse 23, and Amen and Amen.